environment and they've, they've just been nothing but welcoming and so the teammates and the atmosphere itself. Obviously last night's performance wasn't my highest peak, but um, you know, I felt the love from the fans even though like, I had the worst night possible. So I set the bar really low just to come back up, so it'll be good. That's the perfect mindset to have. Obviously yes. the results weren't what you wanted last night, but making your full season debut, putting the uniform on, taking the field, getting into the box, taking BP, the whole spiel. How did it feel? Lust. After after COVID and everything, and then the restrictions on having fans in California for school, no one was allowed to come see the games. Even my parents, they missed my senior night, and it was it was tough. You know, so in that aspect of having you know fans out here is unbelievable. Like my, I was telling the coach like my adrenaline rush. I was telling Gookie, not the coach. Uh, I was telling Gookie like my my adrenaline rush is through the roof right now. It is it is unreal. Like he goes, are you okay? I'm like. I don't know. Like my heart is racing right now. Like I, like I feel like I'm getting ready to play Friday night football under the lights. Like this is unreal. I was gonna say, you know, considering all the restrictions that you had out in California at San Jose State, of course, the pandemic canceling in 2020 season after a couple of games. When was the last time you played in front of a crowd like they had last year, last night here? Um, for the home for a home stand, I don't think ever. For an away game though, against UNR. Uh, there's there's fans there. There's a, a great amount of fans because they were on the on the edge of winning the Mountain West Championship and they ended up winning it. So there's a lot of fans there supporting them. And you know, I've had, I was telling my parents this last night too. I've had a lot of fans rooting against me before, but <laughs> not for me. So it was weird. Like I was telling my dad, I hit the foul ball. I hit, I hit the foul ball, maybe 500 plus feet. And all I hear is the fans yelling my name, like "Let's go, I let's go!" It. I told my dad, like I don't think I've ever like felt my heart beat so much. So, obviously, trying to get adapted to the environment over here and the supportive fan system is the number one priority. I was going to say, you know, you had that big roar of applause for a foul ball. I obviously, heard that we yesterday. talked about the results weren't what you wanted, but to feel that your first game in a full season uniform, first game with the Tortugas, to have that loud roar for something that, you know, you're not used to getting a cheer for, you know, it had to be a special feeling. It was, it was amazing. It was, it, was, it was unreal. I never felt anything like that. It was awesome. Now, you mentioned your parents getting drafted last month in July, fourth round selection by the Reds. What was that moment like for you and your family to hear your name called, get the phone call from the Reds, and then be able to share that moment with, I'm sure, not only family, but friends as well? I gotta thank my parents for just getting me to that point as well and supporting me through my journey. My coaches yes. and uh, Adam Carey for helping me, my agent helping me through that process. And uh, I had got on the phone with Adam. And he told me, hey, third round Reds, like, what you want to do it? I'm like, let's, let's do it, man. Like, let's freaking go. And my parents knew that, like, whenever I got a phone call, she should be quiet. So they said, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And I said, I'm not going to tell you, but it's in the fourth round. And then they're just like, oh, my gosh. So they're, like, narrowing down the teams that, like, they knew. And they were just, like, listening, ah, uh, listening, ah. Uh. And then right when the Reds came, it was just a moment of surprise for everyone. So it was just like, it was, it was crazy. It was one of the most surreal feelings I've ever had in my life. And it's been really cool. I mean, we posted about, you know, you, Blake, and Michael joining the team yesterday and the response on social media, the excitement for you getting a chance to play full season ball from friends, family was enormous. I mean, the support system, it seems like you have is tremendous back yes. on friends and family. How special is that to see everyone so excited for you, you know, not just getting drafted, but coming out here to Daytona? Um, like the, that little glimpse you guys got, maybe like a little little pinch of what it's like back home. I was telling, I was telling my coach, the my, uh, my coaches in San Jose, I was like, hey, if you open up the the game, you're gonna have almost the entire city of Watson go there. You're gonna have Santa Cruz there also, like just yes. wanting to watch the game. And so I'm very grateful to be where I'm at, and very grateful to come from Watsonville, California, and having to always wear Watsonville on my chest with pride. And you got a lot of really great players down here, and it seems like you already have a pretty close relationship with the two guys who came over here from Arizona with Blake Dunn and Michael Troutline, cracking jokes with them. What was it like going out there to Arizona for the first time, getting on boarded with the Reds organization, making your debut, and getting a chance to meet some of your fellow draftees? Just like last night, I was eager, eager and anxious. The first, first time putting on a uniform back again until I don't know how long it was, two and a half months maybe, just grinding it out. And, getting like hitting got opportunity to play and, you know i didn't do so hot my first day in arizona i didn't do so hot my first day in 
uh, Daytona, but my second game I was better, so hopefully we hope for the same results this next next start. Now you mentioned that second game, you had your first professional home run there in the Complex League in Arizona, but had to be a special feeling, a long time of hard work and dreaming of getting to professional baseball to hit that first pro home run had to be a, you know, a special moment for you. It was. It was even better because I hit it in front of my aunts and uncles. My aunts and uncles were there, so they're in Arizona too. Screaming my name, and I specifically told him too. If I do something good, don't do the things that we usually do when there's a hundred other people you can blend in. <laughs> they were echoing the entire complex. It was unreal. So obviously, I showed him the love, and and it was it was awesome. It was. I was at a, I was at a cloud nine that that day. It was awesome. That's a wonderful thing, and you know, it's been a tough last year and a half, two years for everybody throughout the country, of course, the pandemic canceling the 2020 college baseball season for you, and everyone was trying to find different ways to stay in shape, stay, you know, ready to play baseball whenever the time was coming around again. How did you find ways to stay active and stay busy last summer when there was so much uncertainty, not just around baseball, but life? took my mind off of it by going outside and hanging out with my brothers, whether it was baseball. Sometimes we wouldn't even do baseball every single day. We would do uh, football drills just to get the youngest one ready in the middle one. We'd go play basketball. We would go throw rocks. We'd go we'd play stickball. It was whatever game we could find. And I'd also bother my coaches too. Like, hey, like, can you work with me? Like, can we go do stuff? And be like, yeah, no problem. So we'd go find a backyard cage and we just get our work in. And, you know, it was just grinding as much as we could and grinding wherever we could. Hey, you mentioned their family, brothers, parents. I mean, it seems like you have an amazing uh, and close family. You have, you, know, you mentioned your aunts and uncles out in Arizona. How important are they to getting you to where you are right now? Without them, I wouldn't be me. You know, I was listening to the song, uh, "Without." I think it's Without You by Luke Holmes. And they, they always, it's, it's exactly how Luke portrays it in that song. You know, they always give me the praise, but they never take into accountability that without them, I wouldn't be me. So I'm extremely grateful for the loving environment that my parents they put me in and they continue. My my dreams and my successes are priority number one for them in their books rather than, hey, maybe we don't need to go to Hawaii for a, a vacation. Maybe we should go to Ruben's, Ruben's tournament this weekend. So it was cool. Well, we're certainly grateful for you being you as well here in Daytona Beach. Ruben Ibarra, one of the newest members of the Daytona Tortugas, thank you so much for taking the Hello, time to Ruben. join us. Congratulations on you. your selection last month, and we're so excited to have you down here in Daytona Beach. We'll be talking to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's go Tortugas. Here up next, the pregame show starting lineups and first pitch here on the Tugas Radio Network.